Hi, I'm Dr. Dave, also known as the Soulmate Specialist. And today I wanted to talk about a very interesting concept that a lot of people are interested in, a lot of people like to talk about, and that is uh, whether or not soulmates are real. What is a soulmate? Uh, I wanted to specifically address a statement, concept, brought out by Elizabeth Gilbert. She was the author of Eat, is the author of Eat, Pray, Love. This is her definition of soulmates. People think a soulmate is a perfect fit, and that's what everybody wants. But a true soulmate is a mirror. The person who shows you everything that is holding you back. The person who brings you to your own attention so you can change your life. A true soulmate is probably the most important person you'll ever meet because they tear down your walls and smack you awake. A soulmate's purpose is to shake you up, tear apart your ego a little bit, show you your obstacles and addictions, break your heart, open so so new light can get in. Make you so out of control that you have to transform your life. And this is by Elizabeth Gilbert. That's one of the most profound definitions of uh, soulmate I've ever heard. Um, I've done a lot of research on the topic of soulmates. Uh, my dissertation was in the belief in soulmates and how people perceived it affected their relationship choices. So I did a literature review on a lot of different beliefs and concepts uh, on soulmates. I've come across a lot of quotes and definitions, uh, theories on what soulmates are, and that's one of the most accurate and profound that I've come across outside of the one that, that I provide uh, as a soulmate specialist. And um, it's interesting because although she has this wonderfully accurate and descriptive definition of soulmates. She, at the same time, kind of tells people that all of that that I just read, because of the intensity of that experience with the soulmate type, that people should not really be with their soulmate, that it's too much. And so it's like, although it's a wonderful thing, she almost treats it like it's like the sun, saying that the sun is this wonderful ball of energy that provides warmth and sunlight, uh, heat, so on and so forth. However, that heat is too intense and it's radiation, and so it can be harmful. So because of that intensity, you shouldn't be with this only. And uh, that kind of thinking is creating some of the worst scenarios and uh, some of the situations that, although it, it creates a client base for me to work with, at the same time, it's making my job hard or harder because it's making people think that the very thing that they should be looking towards is too much. And so she's almost encouraging or perpetuating weakness. Let me let me explain or describe what that what that is like or what I mean by that. She would be like her her encouragement or her words would be like telling a child who's going through grade school that because algebra is, is tougher than elementary mathematics. That because it's too hard, even though it's built into most schools' curriculum, or should, or should be, um, that you should back away from it. That you shouldn't, uh, you know, spend too much time with it because it could be... Uh, 
damaging to your ego. Now, I know that that example won't work for some. So um, let me try to take the sun example and relate it to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm big into superheroes and some of you out there also love superheroes. So um, it would be like saying that although the energy of the sun is intense and although it is what fuels the powers of those from Krypton, like Superman, that uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't get near something like that because you should just take the, the, the goodness of it but not spend too much time around it because it will destroy you. Uh, I'll try to see if another uh, better example comes in my mind, but the bottom line is what she is putting out there is that she's almost encouraging or perpetuating weakness, saying that although it is the challenging things in life, anybody who's successful knows this, the challenges in life are the things that build character, build determination. Uh, Rocky, Apollo Creed, today the game seven is coming up. That would be like telling the Cleveland Cavaliers because it's too hard, especially a few games ago. It would be like telling the Cleveland Cavaliers, LeBron James and his team, it's too hard to come back from a three to one deficit and win. So because it's too hard, uh, take all the joy, take all the lessons of getting to the finals, but don't spend a lot of time trying to win when you're down three to one. You know, just take the, 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 the good parts, the lessons, because it will, it will build you. The fact that you got here is enough. The fact that you try it is enough. But don't put it all on the line. Because you might put it all on the line and you might lose. So, you know, take the take the pros. Take all the good things from it. But walk away with your head held high that you even made it to the finals. Because trying to, trying to overcome something that's never really been done before or a high likelihood that it won't happen uh, will just be a waste of your time and energy and will it'll help you in the long run but it will be too much for you so take the easier one. again that's one of the worst pieces of advice that I've ever heard coming from the same person that has the best definition that I've ever heard of soulmates. It's one of the most ironic things ever. Elizabeth Gilbert was on Oprah Winfrey's show and uh, she said the same thing that was written in her book. And she basically said that, you know, she kind of encouraged people to be happy. Find happiness with someone who you can work on the things that you learn from your soulmate, right? But work on them peacefully and easily and in a slow pace with someone who doesn't bring those things, those same kind of qualities that the soulmate does to your life. And let me tell you folks, again, I don't know about you, but I'm not that type of person to not fight hard for the best. The best that I can do, the best that I can be, all that I'm meant to have, all that I'm meant to be, that's just in me. And I know it's not in everybody, and that's why I always say, um, you know, I copy off of Jay-Z, it ain't for everybody. The soulmate thing, it ain't for everybody. It's not. It really isn't. But for those who have that kind of mindset. I want to give you the opposite kind of encouragement that Elizabeth Gilbert gave. Over my head, 
you see a picture. There's a picture of two people, right, walking towards each other. Now, I don't know if you can see it. I'll try to get a, a closer. Two people walking towards each other with blindfolds on. Can you see the blindfolds? Now, what many people cannot see in this picture is but between them is a faint image of something. If you see it, hit like right now, make a comment on the on the video saying that you can see it. Basically what is there, if you look very carefully, is the image of a hand. A hand that neither of them can see. And um, neither of them necessarily know is there. They're walking with blindfolds on. Now, uh, there's a similar tarot card uh, read by those who follow that kind of those kind of things, astrology and so on and so forth. Where and, and that particular card is called the Fool. The interesting thing about that tarot card is. This picture is a picture of faith and soulmates. These two individuals are meant to be together and they're walking towards each other. They don't know that the other person is walking towards them. They don't know that the other person is even exist, exists. They believe that there's another person. They believe that they have somebody that they're meant to be with. And so they're walking by faith and not by sight. That's why they're blind. The faint image of the hand is God's hand. And although they're about to step out, right, and that, that kind of gesture is called stepping out on faith, although they're about to step out and it looks like to their detriment, to their doom, the hand is there. They will be caught. And as they step out, and notice that timing is, is, is interesting. They're both stepping out at the same time, not knowing that the other person is on the other side of the ridge, the other side of the river, not knowing that there's a hand. But it doesn't matter because they're walking by faith. When they land, they will fall into that hand and fall together. Now, it's a beautiful depiction, beautiful picture. That is why it's in my living room. That is why I love it so much because it's a, it's an image that describes the whole soulmate path. However, the tarot card calls this very same gesture. Actually, they use a quirk gesture for this gesture of soulmates because they call it foolish. To most people, faith looks foolish. An interesting irony in that is that it's foolish to not have faith. Uh, in my dissertation, what I, one of the things that I found, um, you know, in the findings of that dissertation, was that it seemed that higher education decreased people's faith. When in actuality, the more education you have the higher your faith should go. So what happens is people's education, when they become more knowledgeable about all the things that are out there, all the explanations that are out there, and let me tell you, most of those explanations are true. Well, how is that, Dr. Dave? Well, that's that's for another video. But I'll, I'll, I will say publicly, most ex explanations, most religions have a solid amount of truth behind them. Why? Because technically, they're all saying the same thing. But again, that's for another video. So with this kind of information, people begin to believe less in any one explanation. And so they just decide that faith is fake and that it's made up. When in actuality, 
a higher level of intelligence and a, and a, and a greater amount of education should lead you to the understanding that all of these explanations are just pieces of one whole puzzle. And that these explanations are coming from a limited perspective and that your, your education, especially if you're a scholar, opens you up to studying multiple, dis multiple disciplines from multiple angles to where you, with the higher level of education, start being able to see the bigger picture. Ironically, this does not happen because most people are black or white thinkers and they miss the fact that life is not just gray, but it has what I call the balanced perspective. To bring all of this back, to the Elizabeth Gilbert uh, concept or, or the, the statement that she made. The concept of soulmates is one where, yes, there's a lot of information. Yes, it will make you uncomfortable. Yes, it will challenge you beyond belief. Yes, it will be the hardest thing you ever do if you decide to walk the soulmate path. Yes, love can conquer all, but there's a lot <laughs> to conquer. And with all of that, it is intense. It's supposed to be. Why would you want your love to not be intense? Passion is intense. Passion is not just in the bedroom. Passion is in every aspect of life. The bedroom and sex and physicality, that's just the lowest form of it. There's spirituality, which is the highest form. Your mentality, your mind psyche, your soul, then your emotions are so deep. These things are intense. And without building up the ability to be able to tolerate that so that you can grow and get to the higher levels of life and the deeper aspects of who you are, the essence of who you are, your core, without building that up, then you're, you're subscribing to something that's perpetuating weakness and perpetuating your inability to be the best that you can be, to fulfill purpose, to know who you are. You're perpetuating something that will keep you limited, and some people are okay with that. But if you are not, if you're someone who wishes and desires for all that is open to you, all that is available to you, then don't cower, don't have fear. Seek faith. Don't listen to other people who have read. Read. Don't just watch my videos and take my word for it. Look into the information and research, study. Because truth is out there. And although there's a whole bunch of people out here, there's one of the things, my truth, your truth. Yes, we all have a truth. But then there's an overarching truth that will always surpass any truth that any one individual can have. The collective truth, similar to Carl Jung's collective unconscious. So if you seek, if you want more for yourself, if you believe in higher levels of love, then don't go for what's easy. Go for what's yours. Go for what your higher power, the creator, God, whatever you call it, the thing that you believe is beyond yourself. Go for what life has for you. Because it's out there. That person is out there and most likely they're waiting. They're waiting for you to realize that that level of intensity is good for you. Growing pains only makes you better. And I'll end with this final thought. Ordained spouses are even higher than soulmates. Soulmates are meant for purpose. They're made for purpose. And although ideally you can marry your soulmate, above a soulmate, 
is an ordained spouse. And although a soulmate and an ordained spouse ideally can be the same person, in some situations like mine, they are not. And I would say most most people have situations like mine where you have a soulmate that helps you to find who you're meant to be, what you're meant to do, get on your purpose path, and begin the, the, the walk. And your ordained spouse is the person who you're meant to marry, who's meant to join you on that walk and finish out that path together for the rest of your days. But I'll leave the rest of that for another video. I hope you all enjoyed. Check me out on thesoulmatespecialist.com, the Soulmate Specialist on all social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Twitter as the special underscore is. And just uh, listen to the videos, listen to the, the radio broadcast, the interviews. I have a couple coming up uh, soon. Come out to, to some of the events that I have. Uh, Soulmate Ministry for Singles every second Friday. Social Expressions every third Friday here in Philadelphia. Pretty soon I'm going to be bringing to, to, to my second home, uh, D.C., Washington, D.C. area. And, um, you know, like I said, don't just take my word for it. Research it. Look into it. And don't just take, Eli please, don't just take Elizabeth Gilbert's word. The information is out here. And the more you know, the more you grow. I hope you all have a wonderful night. It's been enjoyable spending my time with you and sharing this information with you. Until next time, the Soulmate Specialist out.